situations that you think are greater in your life than you can overcome. 
Let me remind you that you might not be able to do it on your own, but there is a God that we serve whose name is Jesus. He is greater. He is greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Claim that promise today. Come on, your situation. Claim it right now. like our God. You ought to turn to your neighbor and just say, there's no one like our God. Great is our God. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and let's just clap to that great God. Applaud him. Hallelujah. 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 God is a great God, isn't he? Amen. I, I feel faith in the house today, right now. You ought to grab a hold of it. Why don't, you just, why don't you just, as an act of faith, take your hands and just reach up and try to grab a hold of the faith that is in this house. God has put a supernatural faith in here right now for you. For you, right now, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Come on, that's it. I believe it, Lord. I believe it, Lord. I believe it, Lord. Hallelujah, I believe it, Lord. I believe it for my need. I believe it for my situation. I believe it for those that are around me right now, God. <laughs> Lord, you are greater than any obstacle. You're greater than any sign of defeat. You're greater, God. You're greater, Lord. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We're going into a time of prayer right now and just asking you to present your need to the Lord. If you have a physical need in your body, you got a situational need. I know some of you just are facing deadlines and facing sometimes barriers and walls that seem to be preventing that. Some of you are carrying the burden of lost souls and asking God to help in that situation. Some of you are struggling with health and, and other situations. Some of you have been out of church for a month. <laughs> And you just need God to baptize you and renew you in His Spirit. Amen. This is what we're praying for. This is what we're praying for today as we continue to, 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 to uh, enter into His presence. We have some, some real serious needs of prayer as well that we're asking God for healing in. Uh, Diana Hermesh is in need of healing. Brother Mick is asking us to pray with him for, for Diane. We also want to continue to uphold the uh, Smith family. Josh and Crystal, many of you know, uh, their baby girl was uh, born this week and uh, uh, has had some very uh, serious situations in her life that, that uh, are in need of a miracle healing right now. She um, was born, as we are told, with the uh, umbilical cord wrapped around her neck, went a, a very long period of time without the oxygen that she needed has been in the Riley Hospital now or in the hospital in Indianapolis for uh, for several days and today um, she's going to be placed into the hands of God 
they'll be disconnecting that life support and um, a heavy burden for this family and for Josh and Crystal and their church in Westport and we are praying as you have been praying we are continuing to pray speaking with brother Seaman and sister Kim this morning it ain't over till God says it's over Amen. and the doctors have said there's no brain activity uh, but yet there is hope in Jesus and so we're just going to pray a prayer of healing and miracle because I know that God can raise and I told God this the other day I saw yesterday maybe even I said God you know you took Lazarus four day four days dead in a grave brought him back to life this, this child's alive you can bring that brain back to life and I believe he can do that I, I believe he can do that that's what faith is coming to this place so that's gonna be our prayer we we'll pray for grace and comfort to this family as they traverse this day and they see the will of God wrought in their lives. We want to pray for that need, amen, we, and, and for Diana. We also want to continue to pray for Brother Nick Sr., who is uh, suffering from cancer and needs a miracle touch in his life. We're praying for, for uh, also for Ron Prentice and for Gloria Prentice as they, as they face cancer as well. And uh, Sister Edna Wagner has COVID. Brother Terry called me today. They've been exposed. The Massengales have been exposed. Uh, the Phillipses have been exposed. And they're all at home today for that reason. But Sister Edna does have cancer. So we want to pray for these, or not cancer, but COVID. So we want to pray for these needs as well. I invite you, if you have a situation in your life that you come to an altar, bring it to the altar and just ask God to intervene. He's here. And I believe he's going to work a work. He's raised our faith and he's caused us to, to believe now. And so we're just going to ask God to do these things. Help us pray, church. Lift your voice and help us pray for these needs. Come and stand at an altar of prayer. And let's receive from the Lord right now as our faith rises. In the name of Jesus, by the power and the authority of your word, God. And in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to move behalf of every spoken request that has been made from this pulpit every spoken request God and every name that has been called out we pray for the Smith family God and I pray especially uh, Lord Beliana Lord that you would work a miracle her name Lord is that Lord prove it in her life in Jesus name I believe that you are the healer I believe that you are the healer I believe that you are the one that brings life out of nothing put his life back into a body Lord, that is without it now in the name of Jesus I pray for grace God I pray for strength I pray Lord for your strength and your comfort in Jesus name God in the name of Jesus 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 God, work a word, God. Do a miracle, Lord Jesus. Miracles are in this place. Chains are broken. Eyes are open. Miracles are in 
You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Sing, I believe. I believe. your hands one more time to the Lord in this place. Would you do that? Uh, just open up your heart and your life to him. I believe, I believe, I believe. Sing one more time. Hallelujah. A miracle can happen. Hallelujah. A miracle can happen. Hallelujah. A Let it happen, God. A miracle can happen. With those signs, A those wonders following God in this place. Right now. Yes. God, yes. Lord, a miracle can happen. I believe in yes, Lord. A miracle. I know that. God, we trust that. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle We trust you in this place right now, God. We exalt you, Jesus. God, whatever it is, Lord, we're trusting you for it in this place this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. This mountain can't be
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your
So I believe it, you said, so it is done, you said, and I believe it, you said, so it is to you a couple weeks ago reminded you that when Jesus said to his disciples let us go over to the other side the destination was inevitable there's no way to stop them from getting there because Jesus had said it storm was going to come but their arrival was guaranteed it's guaranteed somebody hear me today it may be in the midst of a storm your life may be rocking in a re rocking and a rolling we'll say turning almost upside down but if you can just hear the word of God speaking to your situation if he said it then I believe it I believe it why don't you just claim that promise for a moment in this place claim it come on God has spoken to some of you don't let the storm distract you now. He said it. I believe. I believe you, Lord. You said. Yes, you did, God. So it is done. Hallelujah. You said. I believe. You said. Hallelujah. One more time to the Lord before you're seated. Clap mightily into Him. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord bless you. you. may be seated. Wow, wow. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Pray with me if you would. I want us to pray for, for Steve Herman, Brother Dave Herman's son, had open heart surgery this week. I failed to mention that in our prayer time. And, and I want us to pray and just ask God to help that situation as he continues to heal from that. God, in your name, be grace and strength. Thank you for bringing him through this open heart surgery. I pray for Steve. I pray for Brother Herman. I pray for his family and ask for your grace and your mercy. Cover that in this hour. 
in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? <laughs> Special guest Anesthesia is with us. We're so glad that you are here. Welcome to Bethel. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Amen. Thankful for what God is doing in, in our midst. Uh, how, many, how many people do we have here that work second shift? Did you raise your hand if you're on second shift? One, two, three. Awesome. Uh, that means the rest of you can be here Wednesday night. Unless you're working a swing shift. Sometimes I know that happens. Wednesday night, prayerfully, Bible study. Uh, I'll be teaching on what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart as our theme for this year. And so I hope that you'll come and uh, help us as we pick this theme up for the year 20. Today, you, you know, um, th this, this that is happening in our midst today, it doesn't happen by chance. We've been praying, we've been fasting, uh, we've had regular daily fasting going on um, almost every day, if not every day, and I believe every day, unless you failed uh, to remember to fast on that day, but we've had fasting and prayer going on for the last 21 days. Today's the last day of our 21 day of days of fasting and praying. But I hope, I hope some of the things that you, many of the things that you have laid down, uh, you'll not pick back up. You'll not pick them back up. But keep them as a sacrifice unto the Lord so that we can continue to see God's blessing. And I believe what you're experiencing in this place today is the culmination of prayer. Many came last night at 7 o'clock and prayed for this service today, spent half hour, 40 minutes in here praying for you to be able to enjoy what you are enjoying here today and for us to enjoy it. So we're thankful for that. Our daily Bible reading schedules are in the back. It's still not too late, although I imagine somebody's probably already finished their Bible this year reading it, but it's not too late for you to pick it up and join us. So I think we had uh, 15 or 17 people last year that we know of that completed their Bible reading. So pick up a schedule. There's a schedule for adults. There's a schedule for children. Make sure adults, you don't pick up the children's schedule. It's a little less. You won't make it all the way through, but you can do daily Bible, Bible reading. And then your daily devotions. Many of you committed to that. Make sure you're holding on to those commitments. They are in the back as well that go along with our Bible lesson. So today's lesson in the Bible hour, that book will will lead you through the rest of the week in the daily Bible reading and devotion and ap application of that lesson to us. So pick a Bible, uh, a daily Bible, a daily Bible devotion uh, up in, in the uh, uh, sanctuary or in the vestibule out there. And also, Brother and Sister Pauling have the children's uh, devotion for the family devotion available as well. And they've probably already seen you for that. But if you need one of those, please let them know. Um, we have a private Facebook page that has been created. My wife has created this for members of Bethel. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't received an invitation to that, it's called Bethel in the Know, and um, it's where we'll be posting most of all of our information that is pertinent specifically to you and that we want to uh, minister to you in. So uh, please see her if you haven't received that or can't figure out how to work that out, and she'll help you as well as probably uh, several of the other ladies, Sister Seifert and uh, Sister Poling can probably help with that. Brother Seifert, don't ask me, <laughs> but they can help you with that. Amen. Next Sunday at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. I'm excited about next Sunday. It's our fifth Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. Brother Trent Sharon uh, got COVID this week, so he'll be good for next week. I'm excited about that. I thank the Lord for that. And I received a text this morning that he is doing well. So we look forward to Brother Sharon being with us. He's a children's evangelist. He's a, a family pastor as well. And he'll be ministering in our 11 a.m. and our 6 p.m. This is not an either-or service. This is a come-to-both service. So bring your children. Invite somebody to come. You're going to be uh, happy that you came next Sunday. 
is going to, you'll find a time of, of uh, a great encouragement, and he's going to bless our children. I'm looking forward to somebody receiving the Holy Ghost, seeing their need to be baptized next Sunday in our services, so we're looking forward to that. Again, that is at 11 and 6 p.m. only next week, so make sure that you're planning to do that. And then February the 11th through the 13th is our marriage retreat for all of our marrieds of all ages. It's a Friday evening and then a Saturday uh, morning, and then our speakers will be staying over on Sunday to minister to us. Many of you will remember brother and sister Duffy that were here a few years ago. They will be back with us for that weekend. So make sure that if you are a married adult that you are planning to join us for that week. This is especially for you. Don't miss it. It's going to be a good time. And so uh, make sure you're not letting anything keep you from that. Don't let any excuse come up. Have I made that clear yet? <laughs> we want you here. You're going you're gonna to benefit from it. It's going to be a great time of fellowship. Amen. <clears throat> Asking our ushers to come. They're going to uh, be receiving our offering tonight. And this is how we worship the Lord. We worship the Lord in our giving. And we honor the Lord with our tithes. And so I'm thankful for this opportunity to be able to worship the Lord. God bless you as you give. And then we're going to enter into a time of the word of God. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this offering that is being given. I thank you for the faithfulness of your people. I thank you, Lord, for giving us this chance to bless you in, in, in returning to you what you have blessed us with. And now, Lord, I ask you to bless your uh, people, Lord, as they give to the kingdom. And Lord, I pray that you would restore that which the avenger has taken. And I pray, God, that your kingdom would be uplifted in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you as you give. Stand with me, if you would, for the reading of the word of the Lord. And in doing so, why don't you just greet somebody around you, beside you, behind you, turn around, wave to one another. It's so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Reading from Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And then Galatians chapter number 6 as well. Man, Brother Steve is doing well. We miss him. He is uh, still up at his daughter's. I talked to him yesterday. Uh, Brother Keith told me he thinks he'll be coming home today to his house. And he told me he plans to be here Wednesday night. So we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Help us pray for... Again, the Massingales, Brother and Sister Wagner, Brother and Sister Phillips in the days ahead. God's hand of protection will remain upon them. In Luke chapter 8, verse 4 through 8, and then verse 11. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake a parable, this being Jesus. He said, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. Some fell upon thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Verse 8, and other fell on good ground, sprang up bear fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Verse number 11, 
Jesus explains to us that this parable that he spoke, that in this parable, the seed is the Word of God. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 7. The last portion of this verse. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I, I want to say before I forget in my message today, I want to say this to somebody that you have been sowing. And that season of sowing has been long. But you're about to reap. You're about to reap. I don't know what that is, but I'm telling you. Some of you have been through a long season that's been dry and hard. But I'm going to tell you, I believe the harvest in your life is at the door. Why don't you raise your hand and just receive that word from the Lord now. I believe that, God. I believe that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I ask you now that you would bless your word. I pray, Lord, that this word would fall upon good ground today and that we could receive it and, Lord, that we could understand it and that we may grow from it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless, Lord, this vessel, this instrument for the kingdom as we speak these words and bless the hearts that receive it in your name. Somebody said amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 is considered one of the laws of the harvest. It's just a law of the harvest that you will reap what you sow. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing, can it? You reap according to what you sow. If you plant corn, then you will harvest corn. And if you plant wheat, then at your harvest, you can expect to have wheat. That's just the way the law of the harvest is. And we, we understand that there is a connection between what you sow and, and what you reap. And the law of harvest just says that. It simply says it. But it is also understood that this is true in every area of our life. What we sow or what we plant or the seeds that we put out is directly connected with what we harvest. <clears throat> there are other laws of the harvest as well. You may not have realized that there is more than one, but there are many laws. Other laws such as you will not only reap what you sow, but you will, you will reap in a different season than when you sow. And that's why I again say to you that, that if you have sown and it seems like there's no progress, understand that God has come for me to tell you today that there is a season of reaping coming in your life. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I know you are. But it's often in a different season. As a matter of fact, it's a law of a harvest that it will be in a different season. Then there's the law that says you will reap more than you sow. Anybody ever found that to be true in your life? You ever found that the blessings of God are much more than what you sowed into it? God always returns a harvest that has an increase. And I think the Bible said today that you plant one and you get a hundredfold. That makes me want to go do some planting. How about you? I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but I want you to consider today as a child of God. If you're a child of God in this place, I, I, I want you to consider the fact that you personally are a result of a seed that was sown. You may not even have known that it was sown. This summer, this past summer, I don't know, sometime mid to late spring, we were, we were just, uh, probably my wife was doing some watering of the flowers and the kids were out there in the front where our where our landscaping is, and it's, it's all stone out there, but all of a sudden, they saw a, a, a plant spring up. And uh, normally, I go around and I pull those plants, but in recognizing this plant, I realized that it wasn't a weed. It was a, a tomato plant, just right, right there. 
So I begin to think, you know, kids, did, did you throw a tomato in, out there? What happened? I don't know how it got there. But this is what I know, is that, that somehow a seed got sown there, probably a bird, if the truth is known. Uh, our neighbor has some cherry tomatoes. We don't have any. He has a lot of them. And that's what grew up in, in our front yard. And when it was all said and done, I, I promise you, that one cherry plant was as big as, this, as the front of this wall up here, one of these walls. I had to pull it up and carry it out. And it was a bundle. I, I don't know where it came from. I, I don't know how it happened. And it's often that way in your life. It, you're, you're, you are the result of a seed that was sown. And you say, I can't figure that out. But let me tell you, and maybe you're second and third generation apostolic, there's going to be a lot of cherry tomatoes come up in our front yard this year. And you may be second and third generation, and you may be raised in, but if you'll go back far enough, and I can go back far enough into my life to where somebody, you know, somebody planted a seed in, in your parents or your grandparents' life. And if, if you'll do that, you, you'll find somewhere in your life that somebody planted a seed. It, it may have been a grandparent. You know, it may, it may have been, it may have been a, a relative or something that, that, that taught you Bible stories on a, 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 an evening before you went to bed. Or, or maybe they took you to church and brought you to Sunday school every Sunday. Or, or maybe they just turned that church music on every once in a while in the car. They were planting seeds. Or it might have been from a church that had a, had a burden to, to spread the gospel and a, a determination to get the word of God out there. And, and so there was a Sunday school drive that, that eventually made it into your heart. And, and, and maybe it was a youth event that you visited. Or a, maybe it was even just a billboard or a track that was left somewhere out there. Or maybe you met somebody on the job that began to speak the word of God in your life. Or, or a client that you had. Maybe somebody knocked on a door. Door, invited your parents or your grandparents or, or you to church. I, I don't know. I don't know how it happened, but hear me when I tell you that you are a result of a seed being sown. Everyone, everyone is the result of the word of God being sown into our hearts and our lives, and then and then it sprang up. Into everlasting life. When you, when you feel that stirring, when you felt that stirring in your spirit, or you feel that hunger in your soul, that, that desire that says there is, anybody know what I'm talking about? There's got to be something more. And all of a sudden, there's a seed of truth that had been planted in your heart somewhere. Maybe you don't even know how it got there. Maybe some little birdie dropped it. I don't know what it was. But hear me when I tell you that it happens in each and every one of our lives. Springs up, takes seed and takes root in our heart. If you've never been born again, if you've never experienced a new birth in your life, please understand that when, when, when the seed of God finds good ground in your life, and what I mean by good ground is simply this, a, a heart that is obedient to the Word of God, and you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, death and obedience, you come to an altar and you repent of your sins, baptism or the burial, in obedience you go to a watery grave and you're buried in the name of Jesus and the resurrection of the gospel is when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in your life when you obey the gospel there is a seed of springing that takes place in your life into everlasting life anybody know what I'm talking about and when that happens in your life, you're guaranteed to reap the many innum innumerable benefits and the blessing of God. Eternal life and, and righteousness are the blessing. Forgiveness, love, joy, and peace. It's not just love, joy, and peace, but it is an abundance of love and joy and peace that is, that it, that is produced in your life. Patience and kindness. The fruit that is manifested from one seed that was planted in your life. That's why Jesus said, he said, I have come to give you life, but it's not just life. It is life that is in an abundance. There's an abundance abundance of grace. There's an abundance of mercy. There's an abundance of joy. There's an abundance of peace. 
that happens in our life as a result of what is sown in our life. And the prophet Hosea said this. He came and he declared to the people of God. He said, so, he said, so unto yourself, so unto yourself, though that, so that God can come and reign upon you. Reign it, Lord. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out your blessing. Pour out. I don't know what you've sowed. I don't know what you've been sowing. But can I tell you that there is an abundance. There's an abundance from God that you can have in your life. You know, you need to stop sowing the opposite of God's goodness and God's mercy and God's grace and God's provision. God's... Stop sowing the works of the flesh because that's what you're reaping. You're going to reap that in the same manifest and manifold way. But if you can ever get yourself to where you sow into the things of God, you're going to find yourself blessed. Have we got any blessed people in the house of God today? In 1973, at the fortress, the ancient fortress of Masada, Masada is that place in Israel where the, the Jews had their, their last stand, those, those zealots had that last stand against that invading army in the year of uh, 73 AD. It was at that place, Masada. That archaeologist recovered seeds. They recognized these seeds and determined that they were seeds from a tree known as the uh, Judean date plant, palm. Judean date palm. The interesting thing about these seeds is that that date palm had been extinct since the year 500 A.D., No longer is there any fruit produced by a tree called the Judean date palm. And at the time of the discovery, the scientists determined that the seeds were about 1,900 years old. 1,900 year old seeds. And when they were determined in 1973, nothing was done with them. They were preserved. And it wasn't until the year 2005, over 30 years later, that scientists planted those seeds in the ground, or a seed in the ground. And on March the 18th, 2005, the date palm that they named Methuselah, emerged from the soil and brought a species back to life. Back from extinction. Brought it back to life from seeds that were over 2,000 years old. And if you go online, you can buy these dates. I looked this morning. Dates from the Judean date palm. They say they have a very distinct honey taste. Well, of course, they're from the land that flows with milk and honey. You can buy fruit from a plant that was extinct for 1,500 years because a seed was found kind of reminds me because this tree was once dead but now is alive of a parable that Jesus taught. Kind of reminds me of that son of a prodigal whose father said, go kill the fatted calf because my son that was dead Bethel Apostolic Church. This year marks 112 years of sowing. As I said last week, many would look around at us and say, wow, don't have much to show for that. 
I beg to differ. I beg to differ because 112 years of sowing seeds is a lot of seed in the ground. Hundred and twelve years is five thousand eight hundred and twenty Sunday school lessons times however many classes we had. A hundred and twelve years is five thousand eight hundred and twenty evangelistic sermons that have been preached from this pulpit. A hundred and twelve years. And that doesn't include revivals, right? But 112 years is 5,820 Bible studies. And that's just within these walls. A hundred and twelve years of songs sung. And, and I figured if, if we just sang four songs each service, which is probably ludicrous, <laughs> over 70,000 songs have been sung by Bethel. <laughs> songs that proclaim truth. Songs that proclaim the Word of God. Songs that speak about the oneness of our God, the power of our God. The majesty of our God. The blood that was shed for us. Songs that proclaim, just keep on keeping on. Songs that speak and plant seeds. 70,000 is just a small number. Multiply that times the many, many times over that you have had a song on at your workplace. Or a song on in your home. Or a song, listen, I'm telling you, 112 years is a lot of seed that has been sown by Bethel Apostolic Church. That doesn't even include the prayers that have been prayed. What about all the prayers that have been prayed? What about all the evangelistic efforts that you as a church have made? What about all the personal testimonies that every child of God in 112 years of this church has spread throughout this community and taken to the workplace and taken to the streets and gone home to your family and allowed to go around the world? We haven't even talked about the missionary efforts that you have supported that we talked about last year where the gospel is being spread throughout the world. There is a lot of seed in the ground. I hope you can understand that and I hope you can see what God is capable of doing because of the seed that has been sown. Seeds are sown and there is a harvest Hear me today, mom and dad, church family. Hear me today, you've, you've planted the word of God in your children's life. You planted it from a young age only to see that it, it, it never brought forth fruit in their life. I hope I can speak hope into somebody's life today. I hope you can keep from being distracted to the point that you can understand the hope that is still in the ground. Don't lose hope today. Those seeds may be dormant. They may be dormant for generations. It seems like they're never going to go. Grandma prayed for you. Grandma prayed for you. I don't, can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, Grandma prayed. The only reason I am here today is because of a praying grandmother or a praying mother or a praying church that just wouldn't Quit sowing the word of God. Just casting it out there. Hold on to that. Hold on to that because I'm telling you, that seed that is planted in that child's life, that seed that is in that prodigal's life, all of those that have backslidden throughout the years from this church, if they're still breathing, there is still life in that seed. And if we'll just keep working, if we'll keep sowing, if we'll keep knocking on doors, if we'll keep testifying to somebody, 
if we'll keep sharing the gospel, if we'll keep inviting somebody to the house of the Lord, we're going to see a harvest. Teach a Bible study. Get out there. Do something. Get in a small group. Don't stop witnessing. Don't stop talking to friends. Keep telling your friends, your relatives, your associates, your neighbors. Why? Because there's a harvest. A harvest. I'm going to tell you something. Bethel, you'll understand. You'll understand what I mean by this if you were here last week. But Bethel, our lost 100... It's in the ground. It's in the ground. The seed is there. Hmm. So whatever you sow, that will you reap. It's the law of the harvest. It's the law of the harvest. And you are a result of the seed that was sown. And that next person that you win to the Lord is going to be a result of a seed that was sown. See, sowing is much different than reaping. Sowing is much different than reaping. Galatians 6 and 9, verse 7, he said, you're going to reap what you sow. That brings us hope. But verse 9 says, So let's not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, or in your time. That's the word I, I bring to somebody today. Your time's coming. Don't be weary. To the church, we have to understand this. Because there's an even greater principle than that we have spoken to you that we have to understand because it's not only the law of the harvest and law of the spirit that you reap what you sow it is also the law of the harvest that if you sow nothing you'll reap nothing sowing always precedes reaping in Luke chapter 8 I believe I'm coming to a close today. Jesus spake a parable. <clears throat> In verse 5, he said, A sower went out. Somebody say, Go. A sower had to go. He had to go. He said the sower went out to sow his seed. See, that was the purpose of his going. Purpose of his going wasn't to go look at the field. Purpose of his going wasn't to go and say, wow, we, we've got a lot of land here. It's great, great land. He had to go with the purpose of sowing. He had the seed. It was his seed. And as a church, we have to understand this. That if we don't sow, we're not going to reap. So we have to sow. We, we have to go with a purpose. We can step back and say, wow, you know, we've got our hundred. <laughs> We can step back and we can say, wow, look at the beautiful building God has given us. We pull onto, the, we pull onto our parking lot. And it's a beautiful place. You, know, you give and it's well maintained. And it's, we can say, wow, you know, look what all we have. Or we can think about building because we can't hold the crowd anymore. Have a purpose. So I got to go do something. Got to get my seed and I got to go. And I've got to sow. There was purpose in his going. And we're all going to leave here today. And we're all going to go. But what is our purpose in going? The 
There's a lot of going. There's a lot of going. And the Bible tells us that we have to be careful that we don't become weary in well-doing. And the Bible speaks of a spirit of heaviness that's come upon our world in the last days. And if it was ever a day that there was a spirit of heaviness, it's today. I've had this conversation for this past week and even had it with my son-in-law yesterday about the fact that we are going so much and we're doing so much that we're too tired to sow. We're too tired to go visit somebody and share that. We're too tired to take an hour out of our evening and go to prayer. We're too tired to open our Bible daily. We're too weary because we have wearied ourselves in going without the purpose of sowing. Our time of fasting and our time of praying have been for the purpose of setting things aside, laying things aside so that we can focus upon the harvest. Stop wearying ourselves with menial tasks. Stop wearying ourselves with, with, with the things of this world that are meant to weigh us down. And let us lay aside every weight. Every, see, we don't have a problem identifying the sin. But the problem with the church today is we have a hard time identifying the weight. But when you start fasting and you start praying and all of a sudden you begin to realize this is keeping me from the harvest. This is keeping me from sowing. And it's time to pick up a handful of seed and it's time to pick up a sickle and get out to the field and sow a little and to reap a little bit. To sow a little and reap a little bit. And so we have to teach. Uh, what is sowing? Let me just say this in closing. Come music. What is sowing? Jesus said it this way. He said, the seed is the word of God. See, we're responsible for sowing. He is responsible for the increase. If we will sow, he will add to the church. If we will sow, and and I'm not talking about a numerical number. Understand, you should understand that if you heard our sermon last week. I'm talking about lost souls that are found, adding to the church. And we have to sow. So what is sowing? Sowing equals preaching the word of God. We're going to to preach the word of God. Another 5,820 sermons are left in this pulpit should the Lord tarry. Bible studies, teaching, but it also includes knocking on a door. It also includes witnessing to somebody on the job, sowing the seed, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, getting involved in a small group, inviting a friend to come and join you in that group so the word can be, can be, be sowed into their, how, their heart. It, it's called getting back into the jails, going back to the jail and spreading the gospel with those that are, that are imprisoned not only physically, but spiritually. In the nursing home, it's talking about recovery programs. It's talking about getting on your fax, on your your phone and texting someone about the good, not not somebody in the church, talking about an outsider, posting something on Facebook that would cause some seed to be planted in somebody's heart. It's called getting on Facebook Live. You, you have the ability, not just us that are here today, you have the ability ability if you got a phone and Facebook to just hit a button and share the gospel with somebody sowing a seed getting online and teaching an online Bible study zoom calls FaceTime with your family it's called block parties and outdoor worship services and downtown street meetings and it's called prayer walks it's called it's called spreading the gospel and all i'm asking is because god promised 
in His Word. And if we could be a true Acts chapter 2 church proclaiming the gospel daily. He said daily He added to the church. And all I'm asking is that the Lord would give Bethel its day of harvest. Just one day, that's all I ask God. God, give us our day. Asking God, give us our day. Stand to your feet. Give us a burden, God, to do more. Give us a burden, oh God, to do more. Hear me today. If you're in this house, you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus. I invite you to an altar of repentance today to come and repent. There's a seed that's stirring in your heart. There's a seed that's stirring in your heart, and you're at a place called good ground today where you can receive from God that life, that eternal life, and the blessing thereof. Come to an altar. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in this place today. And when you do, your life, your life, that man that's dead, will now come forth into new life as, as you begin to spring forth into an utterance of a new tongue in your life. And it will give you the utterance to do that. This is the place of good ground today. Let the seed of God's word speak hope into your life. Bring obedience to an altar and repent of your sins. But to the church, I pray that God would help you to see that it's not enough to go. But we have to go forth with our seed. We have to go forth with our seed for the purpose of sowing. Whose life am I going to affect this week? What life am I going to reach out and plant the Word of God? How am I going to do it? How am I best going to facilitate the spreading of God's Word in my environment, to my friends, to my relatives, to my associates, and to my neighbors? God, speak to our hearts today. Let's worship the Lord. This altar is open, and I invite you to come. Come at this altar. Pour your heart out to the God today. Jesus in your name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Come on, Bethel. Come on, Bethel. Let's do it. Let's sow. Let's sow. Come on, Bethel. Don't be weary. Don't be weary in well doing. So, now we're crying Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Today, Lord. says that the sower went forth with his seed what prevents so many of you from sowing is the fact that you don't feel like you're a preacher you don't feel like you can you can do what is is required of, of this this platform and that may be true you're not called to do that but the bible very specifically states that he does have a seed the sower 
And so what I'm going to pray and what I want you to pray is that God would open your eyes to what your seed is. Some of you will never get up and teach a lesson. But you have a seed that God can take and use to build the kingdom of God. There is the word of God that you can share in your manner and in your way. I don't know what that is, but God... (coughs) that God is going to speak it into your heart right now if you'll ask Him, Lord, you've been talking to me, and some of you, He has been, about what you can do. But ask God to identify your seed. How can I do this? Maybe it's just knocking on a door. Maybe it's picking up the phone and saying, why don't you come to church with me? Maybe it's getting online and teaching a Bible study or getting into a home and teaching a Bible study. I don't know what your seed is, but God does. Help us to identify it. Raise your hands to the Lord if you want God to show you that. Come on, raise your hands to the Lord. That's it. Now pray it now in the name of Jesus. Pray it. God's going to tell you. He's going to show you. Come on, he's going to confirm it in your heart what he's been talking to you about. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. God, how can I? How can I win a soul? God, how can I be used to plant seeds in the life? Now, God, now, God. Oh, God, reveal it to your church. Reveal it to your church, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Reveal it to the hungry. Reveal it to the sower today, God, that one that will go forth. Come on, let God speak to you. Let Him speak to you. Open your heart and your mind to Him. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Find somebody beside you and let's pray together if you feel comfortable. Amen. Find somebody beside you to pray with and let's just ask God. Oh, God, we are greater together than we are separate. Oh, God, there are prodigals yet to be brought home. Lord, there are seeds that have been planted. Come on, pray one for another. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Ah, God, that seed still has life. That seed still has life, God. Let it find that good ground, Lord. Let their heart be plowed, Lord. Let their situation be plowed, oh God. Let it be stirred up within them, Lord Jesus. That it can find root, Lord. Bring forth life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that which was dead come back to life in the name of Jesus 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 oh God you keep hope alive from the beginning to end your word never fails you keep hope alive because you
prodigal in your family that you'd like to see come back to the house of God. I'll, I'll invite you into the altar. I'm, we're going to pray with you. I'm going to pray over you. Come in close here so we can identify you. If you're believing that God is going to do. There's hope. What your situation looks like in your family. If the seed is there, there's still hope. You say, well, it's been a long time. You don't know where it's been. And the research that I did, they were they found seeds in all kinds of environments. All kinds of them. One in the bottom of a dried out lake, buried in peat moss. Some say it was from the ice age. Evolutionists would say it's over 10,000 years ago. Creation says it was about two or 4,000 years ago. And yet there was life in that seed. I'm telling you, if you planted the seed in their life, it is still there. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. They can't get away from that seed that is there. You need to have faith now word of God has spoken to us. I'm looking forward to a harvest. I'm looking forward to a harvest, but I am also looking forward to a return of that which once was dead, but is now alive. Would you raise your hands to heaven and let's believe it together in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak your word today, God, in faith. I speak your word, oh God, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I speak it, Lord, and now we pray it in faith. There is hope. There is hope. And that which is dead would come back to life in the name of Jesus. That which was sown so many years ago, Lord, would now find a place of good ground. Lord, that would spring forth into life. In Jesus' name, I believe it, oh God. 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 When people is rising. Hallelujah. You're rising higher. Oh God, return that child. Return that prodigal, Lord. Return to that pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But your life was stronger. Hallelujah. Rose up from the grave. I believe, I believe, I believe. When evil is rising, you're rising higher. When power is saved, when power is saved, you keep it alive, Lord. You keep hope alive. You keep hope alive from the beginning to end. Your word never fails. You keep hope. Jesus, you are alive. Jesus, you 
just just inspirational thoughts that I throw to you today and I'm going to prove it to you how many of you were a prodigal raise your hand high how many of you left God at some point in your life walked away and then came back there's hope there's hope there's hope when, you, when you're speaking to that prodigal they say something about their past or about, you know, I remember when we went to church and they did this and that. You know what that is? That's hope. That's life. She's got to find a place of good ground. You take hope in that because he keeps hope alive. His word will never fail. It'll never fail. It'll never fail. Oh, God, if you did it for them, you can do it for those. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So now, God, help us, I pray. Help us that we, would, that we would go forth with purpose. Go forth with purpose. Somebody say, with purpose in Jesus' name. Go make a disciple, as Brother Seifert brought us the word Wednesday night. Go make a disciple. Go sow the seed. Just sow the word. Take a, take a name card and just lay it in the restaurant, at the table, whatever it is. You know, send a word of encouragement to somebody. God spoke to you. God will speak to you this week. And help us now, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Let's give God praise and worship before we go from here today. I praise you, Lord. I worship you, oh God. I praise you. I praise you, God. I thank you, Lord, that someone planted seed in my family. I thank you, Lord, for that cousin that knocked on my family's door and invited them to church, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you for saving, Lord, through the preached word, my parents. In the name of Jesus, I praise you for that, oh, God. Hallelujah. I am the result of a planted seed, Lord. I am the result of someone in my life, God. I praise you and I honor you. And we're so thankful in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you again. We're so thankful to have you in the house of the Lord. Pray for those that are sick. Amen. But let's also pray for the lost. Amen. And Tasia, we're glad that you are here with us today. God bless you. Amen, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of Jesus.